Dad, but why don't you take the tie I gave you for Christmas? Well, Ernie, I uh, thought maybe that would be a little too colorful for a business conference. Uh, Heck <laughs> no. Oh, sure, Dad. Everybody wears stuff like that these days. Well, uh, not my group, Chip. Uh, so dazzle them. Why don't you go ahead? Dazzle them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll dazzle them. <laughs> and don't worry about the yard work, Dad. We'll mow the lawn and everything. Thanks, Chip. Oh, is it okay for me to go up to hiking at uh, Switzer's camp with Howard and Keith Saturday? Oh, sure. But it's a rough trail. It's easy to get lost. Just be sure and mark it. Man, <laughs> Dad. Howard's mom made him mark his trail once with colored pieces of paper, and he got fined for litter bug. <laughs> <laughs> well, just be sure you know where you are at all times. That's what I mean. Uh, can I go bowling with Jim Fraser? Yeah, I'll just let Uncle Charlie know where you are. Oh, another thing. We're having a class picnic at school, and... I thought uh, that was next week. It is. But it won't hurt to get everything straightened out before Dad leaves. That's right, Ern. Now, I'll be calling from Houston, but uh, if anything should come up, Uncle Charlie will be here. <clears throat> but, of course, Barbara will be here, too. <laughs> Uh, I'll take it down. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, wait till you girls lay a lip on these date cookies. Mmm, <sighs> delicious, Charlie. They're wonderful, as usual. Mm -hmm. Uncle Charlie, can I go over to Sally Crane's? Hey, look, why don't you pay them people rent? You were over there yesterday and the day before that. So what? So what is she, the Queen of Sheba? No, but she looks okay after you get used to her. Then what's the big attraction? Well, she's a real brain, and I've been studying with her. Oh, well, never let it be said that I stood between you and a brain. Come on, cast off. Uh, how about if Howard Oren comes over and spends the night? Not a chance. Well, do you want it to be said that you stood between me and a friend? On weeknights, yes. Now, how about getting rid of some of that junk in your room? What junk? Well, come on upstairs and I'll show you. Oh, I can see Charlie has everything well in hand. Well, Charlie runs a tight ship. Oh, don't misunderstand me, dear. It's just that it does seem as though Charlie makes all the decisions in your house. It's his house, too. He's been running it a long time. Do the boys go to him for everything? Well, I suppose so. They grew up with Charlie. Well, I'm pleased to see it doesn't bother you. That'd be foolish, wouldn't it? Habits are hard to break. You can't expect the boys to all of a sudden think of me as their mother. That wouldn't be natural. I thought you weren't worried about those two tests today. I'm not. Just messing around with a little insurance. You two worst subjects, and you're not worried? Heck no. When you cram with somebody like Sally Crane, there's no problems. Sally must be a very good student. Man, yeah, straight A's. It's nice of her to help you. Well, she said she likes to have somebody to study with. She's not too popular. Why not? It's just that she's such a brain. She makes all the other kids feel super dumb. And you don't feel super dumb? Oh, I sure do. But I just keep hoping some of her brains will rub off on me. <laughs> Good luck on the test. Thanks. Hey, Sally, wait. How'd you make out on the exam this morning? I think I did okay. Good. I memorized all your notes. Oh, Sally, Chip. I'd like you both to report to me after school. What about Miss Henson? Well, we'll discuss that when we meet. Uh, yes, Mrs. Henson. Uh, sure, Mrs. Henson. I wonder what she wants with us. I don't know. But if they can't discuss it in the hall, it must be something rotten. Is there more ironing every week, or does it just seem that way? Both. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. How was school? Billy got sent to the principal and Kim got glue in her hair. Well, why was Billy sent to the principal? Just for putting the glue in Kim's hair. <laughs> it figures. Can I have some cookies, Uncle Charlie? May I? May I, Uncle Charlie? Okay. But leave some for Chip and Ernie. They ought to be home any minute now. Hi. Hi. Where's Chip? I don't know. I guess he got 
hung up at school. Hello? Chip, are you all right? Well, is there something I can do? I see. No, he's right here. I'll get him. Charlie, yeah? I'd like to talk to you. Hello? Yeah? Okay. Okay. Anything wrong? No, Chip just had to stay after school a while for something. I had a chance to go over this morning's exam papers, and I must say I was surprised. I know you've always been an A student, Sally, so I expect good work from you. But, Chip, your paper earned the highest grade you've made this year. Hey, that's great! But I also noticed that your answers and Sally's were remarkably similar. Well, we can explain that, Mrs. Henson. We've been studying together. Yeah, every day. Well, that would explain it in part. But I found that on questions 7 and 10, that the wording of the answers was identical. Well, I didn't want to take any chances, so I memorized most of the notes we made. You two do sit close together. You don't think we cheated? The teacher has to consider that possibility. Honestly, Mrs. Henson, I didn't copy a thing from Sally. Sally, you really didn't. I'm very glad to hear it. Congratulations, Chip. Your hard work showed. Thanks. But Viola, well, you know how she is, forgot to leave me the keys to the beach house. So, Barbara, are you listening to me? Oh, yes. Hi, Mrs. Vincent. Hello, Ernie. Oh, I'm going now, Uncle Charlie. Okay, be back before dark. Okay. Don't take this wrong, dear, but don't you ever feel like a piece of furniture around here? Mother, the boys don't mean to slight me. Going to Uncle Charlie is a habit. Well, you're absolutely right, and I'm a meddling old busybody. Well, I'll call you tomorrow, and maybe we can go shopping together. Mother? Yes, dear? How does a stepmother win the love and respect of her new children? You want them to come to you without being told to, right? I suppose so. I haven't the vaguest notion. <laughs> and how that myth got started about mothers knowing the answer to everything is beyond me. You got some pictures there for us? Yeah. I drew five pictures, so I got to put away all the erasers. Oh, nice. Mmm, those are good colors. Yeah. That's the house. That's Uncle Charlie yelling at Tramp. Oh. Huh? And what's this? That's Chip yelling at Ernie. <laughs> and this? That's Robbie yelling at Kitty and the three babies. Honey, when did you ever hear us yelling at each other? When the TV's loud. <laughs> That's the TV. That's you yelling at Daddy. Well, you try to make a psychological problem out of everything, and you always land flat on your face. <laughs> the main thing is to remember the irregular verbs. Isn't it about time you two took a break? Yeah, it sure is. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you, Mrs. Douglas. I hope I'm not putting you to any extra trouble. Oh, no, not at all. I think it's a good idea that you're studying together. For a while, it didn't seem like such a good idea. Why? Well, Mrs. Henson kept us after school and wanted to know why some of our answers were exactly alike. Well, were they exactly alike? 
Sure. I memorized Sally's notes. Chip got the highest grade he's had all year. Well, I think that's fine. Well, Mrs. Henson thought we cheated. You mean she accused you of cheating? Well, not exactly, but she made us explain. Well, she had to do that, Chip. Just because she got a higher grade than usual? Well, it's not just because he got a higher grade than usual, Sally. It's because the papers were so much alike. Well, couldn't she have just given us the benefit of the doubt? Well, no, she couldn't do that, Chip. It's part of her job to see that the grades are earned fairly. She wasn't unpleasant, was she? Oh, no. We just had to explain, that's all. Well, I think she handled it very well. I'll get you some cookies to go with your hot chocolate. She's your stepmother, isn't she? Well, yeah. Whose side is she on, anyway? <sighs> she's okay. It's just that she's a school teacher, too. Hi. Oh, hi. Where's Chip? Hi, oh, it's cool. Is Uncle Charlie here? In person. Where's Chip? Still at school. Excuse me. That's what I wanted to tell you about. Okay. What's the message from Garcia? Well, he's not going to be home for a while. He and Sally had a report to Terry the Terrible. Terry the Terrible? Uh, Mrs. Terry. Toughest teacher in the territory. How come? I don't know. But if she ever decides to give up teaching, she'd make a great warden. <laughs> I mean, how come she wants to see Chip and Sally? Chip didn't say. Chip, you know why I wanted to see you, don't you? Well, not really, Mrs. Terry. Sally? Well, I don't know either. Very well, then I'll tell you. On yesterday's exam, I found you two missed parts A and C of question two, made exactly the same mistake in answering question six, and in the questions you did answer correctly, your wording of the answers were almost identical. Are you saying we cheated? Well, indications are you did. Mrs. Terry, we can explain that. I hope so. Sally and I have been scudding together. Mrs. Henson will tell you that. I already talked to Mrs. Henson. Well, didn't she explain it to you? She told me what you had told her. She believed us. Oh, I am not questioning Mrs. Henson's judgment. However, her opinions are her own and do not necessarily coincide with mine. Well, then you don't believe us? I find it very hard to believe that a question would be answered by two very different students, word for word. I didn't want to take any chances, so I memorized. That's right, Mrs. Terry. I see. Well, I don't want to be unfair, so I will take what you've told me under consideration and will give you my decision later. It's all for you, sweetheart. Sleep. Well, I've seen enough TV. Yeah, me too. Myrtle and me are going to wash our teeth. Myrtle and I. <laughs> I'll come with you and tuck you in. I'll help her, Barbara. I have to go up and study anyway. Darren, could you check on the babies while you're up there? Okay. Can you tell me a story, Ernie? Sure. I like that one about the green and purple monster. <laughs> yeah, I like that one too. <laughs> That sounds like an Ernie original. Guaranteed to keep her awake for a week. I think it's wonderful that he wants to tell her a story at all. Maybe it's because it's fun to suddenly have a mother and a baby sister. Uh, you and Katie don't have to leave right this minute, do you? No, why? Well, I've sort of got a problem I need some help with. What is it? Well, you know I've been studying with Sally Crane. Isn't that the brainy one you told us about? Oh, yeah. Well, that's a good idea. Well, I thought so, too. But now I'm not so sure. Why? Well, I memorized a lot of her notes, and now two teachers have accused me of copying during tests. Oh, Chip, why don't you ask them to give you some oral questions? I don't think they'd go for that. But what do you think I ought to do, Rob? Okay, you get into your pajamas, and I'll do the old once upon a time. No, sir. I'm not changing my clothes in front of a boy. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to tell you a bedtime story. Myself to bed after the story. Okay. Well, just see, there was this green and 
purple monster. And he liked to eat people on account of they tasted so good. Ernie, why do you wear glasses? I'm <laughs> nearsighted. But people were hard to find, because the other monsters had eaten most of them. Ernie, how come you wear your hair like that? <laughs> well, that's the way it grows. Well, the green and purple monster was very, very hungry. But all he could find was a little skinny kid. Ernie, can I ride your bike someday? <laughs> sure. And they lived happily ever after. <laughs> what happened to the green and yellow monster? The other monster ate him. Oh, good night. <laughs> good night. Did you and Sally explain it to them? Oh, sure. Didn't they believe you? One of them did. But old Terry the Terrible. I mean, Miss Terry. Well, she didn't. Now, what was her verdict? She hasn't made up her mind yet. And I'm starting to get nervous. What did Uncle Charlie say? I haven't told him yet. He was so busy setting up his lodge meeting tonight. You know how he hates to have that wrecked. Yeah. Well, Chip, and until this Mrs. Terry makes up her mind, there's nothing you can do. I was afraid that was going to be the answer. Hey, Anna, we better get going. Yeah. Are you sure you don't mind sitting? I think they'll sleep right through. Oh, no, no. I I'm looking forward to it. I'm meeting Sally at the library. Can you guys drop me off? Sure, come on. Good night. Goodbye, Bye. Bye. Boy, we'll think you'd be getting in trouble at school for studying harder than you ever did in your whole life. I'm really very upset over this whole situation. Honey, these things have a way of working themselves out in the long run. Charlie will take care of it. But I feel I should do something. Well, just leave it to Charlie. He's been through these things a hundred times. But I'm responsible for Chip, too. After all, I am his mother. Well, at least I'd like to be. Well, sure you are. But you're, you're still kind of new at the job. And since it's going to be permanent, uh, you shouldn't feel too unhappy about not helping this one time. Well, with that kind of job security, I shouldn't be unhappy about anything. <laughs> Mrs. Douglas? Yes? I'm Bill Crane. I come to pick up Sally. She isn't here. What do you mean, she isn't here? She said she was going to study with a Douglas kid. Chip. He, uh, he met her at the library. Oh, okay. As long as I'm here, I might as well speak my piece. Well, uh, would you like to sit down? Oh, I can tell her from right here. It's a pretty lousy school system when they let somebody like your kid get my Sally in Dutch with the authorities. Well, I don't agree with you on either point. It is not a lousy school system. And Chip did not get Sally in Dutch with anybody. I don't know what you'd call it. He copied her paper, didn't he? No, he didn't. Well, she sure had no reason to copy his. Sally makes nothing but straight A's. Well, as far as I know, it hasn't been established that anybody copied anything. Well, how come they were both called up on the carpet? Because the papers were similar. Under the circumstances, I don't feel that's any cause for alarm. Well, it better not be. But I've got more important things to do than go running up to that school because of some cheating kid. Good night, Mr. Crane. I just want you to know where I stand. You've made your position perfectly clear. If he blows this putt, he loses the match. I thought you didn't like golf. Only when I have to play it. <laughs> Uncle Charlie? He's, uh, he's watching golf on television. I know, but... Well, that's pretty official looking. Is that from school? Yeah. <laughs> he missed it. Nine inches and the guy misses it. That blows the tournament. Uncle Charlie, I had to bring this home from school. What's this for? Old Terry the Terrible. 
I mean, Mrs. Terry thinks I cheated at school. Cheated? Chip, you didn't cheat. I know, but she thinks we did. So she's giving Sally and me an F for the semester. But that's unfair. Can she do that? She sure can. Chip, why don't I go to school and have a talk with her? It wouldn't do any good. This takes a man's touch, Barbara. I'm going over there and give that old battle axe a piece of my mind. Charlie, losing your temper never accomplished anything. Chip, I'm a teacher. I, I think I could help with a thing like this. Maybe. We all agree that cheating is a very serious accusation. It certainly is. Not one to be made lightly. Oh, I assure you, Mrs. Douglas, I reserved my decision until I was positive. May I ask what proof you have, Mrs. Terry? Well, the similarity of the papers themselves and the proximity of the two desks. Well, I believe the children explained that. You did, didn't you? Well, we tried to. We told it just the way it was. Well, naturally, they denied cheating. Well, Mrs. Terry, maybe they denied cheating because they aren't guilty. Mrs. Douglas, I'm afraid my decision is irrevocable. I see no point in discussing it any further. Well, I do. I will not have these children branded as liars and cheats for something that they did not do. Mrs. Douglas. I have seen the extra effort that Sally and Chip have made, and I will not have them punished for it. Mrs. Douglas, You I... know that Sally is an excellent student. She has no reason to cheat, so what you're actually saying is that Chip is the guilty one. Mrs. Douglas, I can't... I know Chip better than you do. I know his values. And I'm telling you, my son does not cheat! Barbara, you up here? Honey, but why didn't you call me? I, I would have come to the airport and picked you up. Well, I thought I'd save you the trip. I got a ride home with one of the fellas. I can't tell you how glad I am to see you. Well, I can't tell you how glad I am to be home. What's been going on? Well, I made a complete fool of myself. Oh? What happened? I lost my self-control. Oh, you did? Remember that uh, problem that Chip was having at school? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I should have handled it differently, but I thought the whole thing was so unfair that I went to school and yelled my head off. <laughs> you did? Oh, honey, it, it wasn't funny. I mean, right in front of the children, I pounded on the desk and screamed like a fishwife. <laughs> Heaven only knows what the boys think of me now. Yeah, well, hi, Dad. Oh, hi, fellas. Oh, we thought we heard you in here. Welcome home. Well, thank you. Chip, I uh, understand you had a little problem at school while I was away. Yeah, well, that's all straightened out now. Oh, good. For the first time in history, old Terry the Terrible had a back down. Well, that's because she never tangled with anybody like Mom before. Well, good night. And uh, thanks again, Mom. Oh, my. That was the movie. The part I liked the best is the popcorn. Oh. 
Charlie, why are you playing the cello all by yourself on a Saturday night? When they invent a tandem cello, let me know and I'll invite somebody. <laughs> Sit down, I want to play you something. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie, what happened? Oh, I ran out of rosin. Maybe the boys were handling the bow or else the tramp he licked it. I don't know. Well, I think you play beautifully. Me too. Well, it'll do. You know, I used to go with a girl in Singapore that had a shape like that. worried about Charlie. He, he seems so unhappy. Really? I haven't noticed that he looks any more unhappy than he usually does. If you could have seen that poor man sitting in the middle of the room this evening, playing the cello alone. I mean, I, I've never seen anything so pitiful in my whole life. What's so pitiful about him playing his own cello in his own house, uh, aside from <laughs> a few sour notes now and then? Honey, it's not what he was doing. It's why he was doing it. I don't think he's lonely. He just likes to play the cello, that's all. Alone? On a Saturday night with the dog howling? Well, sure, if he enjoys it. Hey, you know, I think this has been a very good dinner. Wish we'd found this place before. Has he been playing the cello long? Oh, we're back on that, huh? You know, I think he's been playing it most of his life. I think somebody gave it to him when he was a kid. Uh, well, he plays it very well. Do you ever play professionally? No, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I do remember him mentioning... Uh, the cargo ship string quartet once. The cargo ship string quartet? Cargo ship quartet? What did he play? Third anchor? <laughs> uh, Mr. O'Casey plays the cello. It was a string quartet. How good was the group? Were they professional? Oh, I'm sure they were. Charlie plays very well. He has a wonderful tone. Oh, tone is one thing. Technique is something else. Are you sure this uncle of yours can still play that cello? Oh, I heard him playing beautifully Saturday night. What does he look like? Well, he's, uh, he's very striking in a rugged sort of way. Why do you ask? Well, I play the viola. And if he looks, uh, if he plays as well as you say he does... Do you think he'd like to play some duets? He'd love it. Oh, wonderful. It's too bad Dad had to work tonight. He'd love this. <laughs> This is the first time in weeks I've seen Charlie so happy. That's all we need is a critic. Come on, get that tramp out of here, will you? I'm with you. Let's go. May I make a suggestion, Mr. O'Casey? Shoot. Your tempo is a bit slow for this number. <laughs> and if you would widen your vibrato just a shade. Just a shade. Shall we try it once more from the top? <laughs> uh, honey, we, we better hit the road. We promised our babysitter we wouldn't be gone too long. Oh, we're terribly sorry we have to leave. Oh, oh let, let me walk you out. Uh, oh, this this way is much shorter. Here, this way. Bye. See you, Barb. Bye, Dodie. Bye. Bye. How can Tramp hollers when they play, Mama? Well, Tramp isn't hollering, sweetheart. He's trying to sing. Uncle Charlie, calm down, please. 
Barbara just asked over because she thought you were miserable and lonely. The miserable I can understand. Where does the lonely come in? You were playing cello all by yourself Saturday night. I took a bath all by myself Saturday night, too. <laughs> Couldn't you go along with it just for a while? Barbara's just doing it because she loves you. Yeah, well, I'd hate to have her hate me. <laughs> if you widen your vibrato. Just the shade. <laughs> Uh, Uncle Charlie, the duet sounded good. Really, it did. Did you get a load of that thing? Oh, did it? Yeah, it wasn't bad at all. Why don't you try to cool it, for Dad's sake as well as for Barbara's? Yeah, well, Chip and Ernie were smart. They got out of here before that dame decided which chin to put her viola under. <laughs> then you do it? All right, but she better not push me, that's all. <laughs> Poor Uncle Charlie. Oh, hi, honey. Hi. Well, what are you looking so pleased about? Nothing. Well, let's see. 2,000 pounds stress per square inch over 22 square... Steve. Uh, there's one thing I want to have to teach you about women. I mean, when you ask them a question, you have to insist on an answer. Well, let's see now, what did I ask you? Oh, why are you looking so pleased? Okay, I insist on an answer. I started the O'Casey String Quartet. The O'Casey String Quartet? Uh-huh. And I'm going to get them engagements to play at women's clubs afternoon socials. They're having their first rehearsal tonight. See, Effie Springer, she's a viola player, and she runs a music store, and she, she's going to sell me a lot of those fancy music stands and tons of music at a discount. And then there's Phoebe Elston and Monica Bradley. They're both teachers that I've worked with at school, and they play the violin. Well, uh, tell me, uh, what does Charlie say about all this? Oh, I think he's just thrilled about having his own quartet. I mean, when I told him, he was so touched. Yeah, but uh, what did he say? He was absolutely speechless. <laughs> uh, if you can, you, uh, you come on down and hear the rehearsal, okay? Well, why don't you just leave the door open? I'll hear them from up here. Okay. <laughs> well, did she tell you? Oh, you mean about the uh, OKC String Quartet? Mm -hmm. You gonna let her get away with it? <laughs> Charlie, if you don't want to be part of the quartet, why don't you just say so? Look, Steve, now, Robbie told me why Bob was doing all this. So I went along for three nights playing duets with the... Uh... Oh, brother. Have you ever met this Effie Springer, Steve? No, uh, what's she like, Charlie? Oh, she's a walking disaster. <laughs> and now Bob is bringing two more of them over. You know, three against one ain't fair, Steve. Charlie, why don't you just come out with it? Tell her you're not lonesome and you don't want to be part of the string quartet. Not me. You're the husband. You go down there and tell her to butt out. Good evening. Oh. I want you to meet Phoebe Elston, our second violinist. Mr. O'Casey, our cellist. Nice to meet you. Hi. Well, as long as the first violinist couldn't get here, we might as well call a rehearsal off. Oh, she'll be right in. Good evening. Oh! I'm sorry, sir. I should have looked where I was going. Well, you sure should have. You, you, you... Uh, you, you couldn't have known that my knee was down there. <laughs> I'm Charlie O'Casey. I'm Monica Bradley. <laughs> this is my string quartet. <laughs> for you. We being raided? 
I guess that wouldn't be a surprise. <laughs> I, uh, I've made arrangements for your debut in public. In public? But we're not ready. Oh, you sound fine to me. Besides, these people understand that you're a new group. It's a woman's club, and it's next week. Do you hear that, gang? The O'Casey String Quartet is going to play a professional job. What does it pay, Mrs. Douglas? Oh, quit making a big deal about the money. Come on, let's, let's rehearse. What does it pay? <laughs> Well, they don't exactly pay. Well, what did they do? <laughs> well, you see, uh, they're giving a lecture on the evolution of music. And your number comes between the Inca Tom Tom artist and a rock and roll group called Red Snails in the Sunset. <laughs> and you, uh, get a free lunch. <laughs> Steve, doesn't Charlie seem a lot happier to you? Uncle Charlie's looked the same to me ever since he walked into our house. Oh, I've noticed a big difference. He seems like a new man since we started that quartet. How did the concert go? Oh, just fine. And yesterday they played for the Ladies' Reading Society and they actually got paid. The Ladies' Reading Society? Honey, they're very intelligent people. Yeah, I realize that, but I just can't picture Uncle Charlie over Casey. Oh, I love him. He took two bows, smiling. Well, as I said, he didn't seem too unhappy to begin with. Uh, where is he now, by the way? They're auditioning for a musical. This time of the morning? Well, it's the only time they had. I mean, you know, the two violinists teach and everyone runs the store. Barbara. Yes. Oh, nothing. It's very nice of you to be so concerned about Uncle Charlie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trump wants to sing now. Uh-oh. You better let him out, honey. Come on, Trump. Hi, Pumpkin. Walking your lion, huh? Hi, Barb. Hi. You're making dinner again. Well, now Charlie's rehearsing. Besides, I kind of like it. I told Trump not to sing outside the window. Good. Bobby, why don't you call Katie and ask if she'd like to come over for dinner? Well, thanks, Barbara. We're going out tonight. I was hoping that Uncle Charlie could babysit the boys. Oh, well, sometimes those rehearsals go on for hours. And maybe your father and I could. Oh, thanks, but we'll, we'll call a sitter. <sighs> Barb, uh, you really think that Uncle Charlie enjoys... Well, I mean, <laughs> this isn't really like him. I think he likes it because he gets to make goof eyes at the lady. <laughs> <laughs> goof eyes? Yeah, you know. <laughs> That isn't it at all. Well, I never realized how devoted Charlie was to music. Well, that quartet sounds better all the time. You really think he gets a charge out of it, huh? Well, wouldn't he be honest with me if he wasn't? Come to think of it, yes. You'd hear from him in a hurry. Well, I'll call Chip if we can't get a sitter. Bye, Dilly. See you later. Bye, Barb. Bye. something we don't know. It has nothing to do with the animal, Mr. O'Casey. The particular piece of music we are playing requires a faster tempo throughout. Yeah? Well, I don't think so. How do you like them apples? I have heard this number played by other quartets. I think Miss Springer is right. <laughs> well, let me tell you something, Alice. This is my string quartet. And we play the tempo, I decide. Any questions? I think we've had enough for tonight. Well, now that's good enough for me. <laughs> Where is Mrs. Douglas? Out in the kitchen. 
Only it ain't gonna do you any good to try and get her to change the tempo. <laughs> I'm sorry about her, girls. Well, these things happen, Mr. O'Casey. <laughs> well, rehearsal tomorrow right after school. Oh, oh, uh, can I uh, drive you home or something? No, thank you, Mr. O'Casey. My fiancé's picking me up. Well, that's all right. I can take it. Fiancé? Yes, I'm getting married next month. Married? Uh, well, what do you know about that? Haven't you ever noticed my engagement ring? Well, who looks at rings? I'm sorry, Mr. O'Casey. Miss Springer, I don't think I understand. She says Uncle Charlie doesn't play good enough. Miss Springer, you can't throw him out of his own quartet. There is no room for sentiment in musical activity, Mrs. Douglas. Mr. O'Casey can only play in one tempo, slow. And music occasionally has to soar, like a flight of birds. But I've arranged some more concerts for you. I'll find a cellist to take Mr. O'Casey's place. I'm sorry, Mrs. Douglas. Truly, I am. Are you going to tell Uncle Charlie that they don't want him? Well, I guess I'm going to have to. What are you going to say? I don't know. I really don't know. You want something? Well, I, uh... I guess it can wait. Train over at the house? Barbara said they threw Uncle Charlie out of the quartet. No, they can't. It's his quartet. <laughs> she said she can't make herself tell him. Poor Uncle Charlie. She just has to walk up to Uncle Charlie and tell him. I know. Poor Dad. Why poor Dad? Well, he'll probably be the one that has to tell poor Uncle Charlie. <laughs> Poor Katie. Why poor Katie? Because she's just dying to go over to the house and get in on it. And her husband won't let her. <laughs> poor Rob. Why poor Rob? Checkmate. you home. Something the matter? Oh, honey, I got him into it, and now he's out. Wait a minute. Uh, who's out? Charlie, he's out of the quartet. Oh. Well, now, it's nothing to get so upset about. I told you he was just being his happy, grumpy self, and you thought he was feeling so useless. His pulling out just proves my point. He didn't pull out. He got thrown out. He got thrown oh, out? Oh, honey, I don't know how to tell him. Well, now, just calm down. It's not the end of the world, you know. He's out there in the kitchen, so just tell him. And don't worry about it. He's got broad shoulders. Would you? Kitchen's right that way. <laughs> Uncle Charlie. Oh, it's you. Smelled my hot chocolate and couldn't resist, right? Well, who could resist your hot chocolate? Well, now, if you'll supply the mugs, I'll fill them up. It'll be ready in a minute.
been so busy with that quartet, you haven't had a chance to cook hardly at all. Now, uh, don't let it bother you. I wouldn't swap my quartet for a whistling tea kettle, especially ours. It's a hard tune. <laughs> don't you miss cooking and being around the house? No. <laughs> well, the family certainly misses you. Katie mentioned just this afternoon that you hardly see the triplets anymore at all. Yeah, well, you tell the folks I'll be over between concerts, see? Now, the quartet needs me, and I like them. But not that Effie dame. She's a bigger drag than a ten-ton anchor. <laughs> Charlie, you're right about her. You know, some people let success go to their heads, and they begin to think that they can run the quartet by themselves. That they don't even need the most important person in the group. Wait a minute, Barbara. Are you trying to tell me something? Charlie, I don't know how to tell you. But they're gonna get another cellist. Another cellist? They can't do that. Kicked out of my own outfit. A dame with two chins. <laughs> I'm sorry, Charlie. I'm just so sorry. something better to do. Uh, we stop a trap now, huh? You're supposed to be protecting me. Hello. Oh, hi, Mother. No, uh-uh. You -uh. didn't bother me. I'm just sitting here knitting. Well, what's so bad about knitting? <laughs> well, Steve and Robbie have been working at something special at the plant, day and night. Dodie's asleep, and uh, Chip is spending the whole week with a friend, and he's upstairs doing his homework. So I'm sitting here with Tramp. The coward. <laughs> knitting. <laughs> Mother, you make knitting sound like it's some kind of a crime against womanhood. <laughs> it's a sweater for my husband, who, oh, who just happened to come in, so I, I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Oh, hi. Hi, Uh oh. Oh, is that bad? I think I'll sit down. <laughs> Really, that company has no consideration for its employees. Look at you. Eyes at half mass, you're knocked out. 
I'm, I'm fine. Sure, you're fine. You look like something tramp dragged in and abandoned. I bet you there's not another man at the plant who works as hard as you do. Now, we're... We're all on this project together, you know. Yeah, but you're the one who comes home looking like this. Well, Charlie made some rice and chicken before he went to his lodge meeting. I'll heat it up. No, I, uh... You see, you're so tired, you can't even tell me you don't want any rice and chicken. I bet you the other husbands got home hours ago. Really, honey, somebody ought to tell those supervisors down at that plant that you aren't a machine or something. Look at you. I'll be fine, honey, as soon as I get my feet up. Oh. Getting your feet up won't mean a thing. Oh. You need a month's rest. Do you realize that the babies don't even know what you look like anymore? Mm -hmm. I've got a little meatloaf I've saved for you. Mm. Oh, don't tell me you're not going to eat it, because you are. Here now, this will make you feel like... <laughs> Watch the 11 o'clock news and then you go. <laughs> oh, honey. Mama really ought to drop you on your head. I think I'll let you get some sleep first. Honey, don't lean too heavily. I don't think I'm built for this. Built for what? Never mind. That's it. One foot up. And the next. That's right. There you go. <laughs> back four that you guys are working on? It's uh, called an R11, Charlie. Yeah? What does the R stand for? Rickshaw? <laughs> it's classified, Uncle Charlie. We can tell you this much, though. It's top secret. Well, doesn't top secret and classified mean the same thing? He's making a joke, Charlie. Yeah? Well, it's 6.15 in the morning. I ain't ready for joke. Is that late? Oh, wow. So you gotta go. Yeah. Charlie, tell Barbara. Tell Barbara what? Oh, you no need for you to get up this early. Well, I, I want to say goodbye. Oh, well, goodbye. Oh. Uh. I'm riding with uh, Rob, so I'll leave my car in the garage for you. The key's in it. See you later. Goodbye. Well, that's the first time I've seen either one of them wide awake in three weeks. Now, don't worry. They'll be wrecks again by the time they get home. <laughs> well, you're both very quiet tonight. Oh, we're taking telepathy in my science class, and I'm concentrating on this girl. Well, why are you so quiet tonight, sweetheart? There's this boy in my class I want to kiss, and he hates me. You want to kiss somebody? No. Oh, but you just said that you... She means that she likes him well enough to want to kiss him. But she wouldn't kiss him if you paid her. <laughs> yeah. Should I think his name? Sure. What is it? Arnold Mims. <laughs> uh, maybe it would be better if you just think your name like I'm doing. Thanks for the dinner. Yeah, thanks for the dinner, Mama. Uh, oh, why don't you both stay here and talk with me? We can talk about thought transmissions, and I'd like to hear more about this boy, Doggy. You want us to help with the dishes? No, no, uh, I just... Oh. oh, never mind. Go on. Think your thoughts. Oh, we'll be upstairs if you need us. Now, about this Arnold Mims fellow. Well, here we are again, Tramp. At least tomorrow's Saturday. It'll be nice to have somebody... I'm talking to a dog. I'm actually sitting here talking to a dog. And now I'm talking to myself. Out loud. <laughs> What is it? Hi. Oh, hi, honey. Oh, it's so good to have you home. 
Do you know that I was actually sitting there having a conversation with Tramp? I was afraid somebody might put a net over me. Do you have anything to eat? Oh, yeah, I, I had a hamburger. Good. You're going to go right upstairs tonight and go to sleep. Yeah, I can use it. With Chip away and Charlie playing in his pinochle tournament, and Ernie and Dodie beaming their thoughts, I can't tell you that I am there, Chip. Uh, I'm right here. Oh, honey, it's Saturday. What are you doing? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I guess I didn't tell you. Oh. We're working right through the weekend. Oh, no. It's the only way we can meet the deadline. Oh, honey, there's a limit to what a boss can do to an employee. <laughs> You're forgetting that on this project, I'm the boss. But it won't be much longer, I promise you. Well, couldn't we just go out to dinner? Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I should be making it easier for you, not harder. Besides, Tramp is quite a good conversationalist. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute, Steve. If, if we do that, we're going to have a duplication of prints. Yeah, well, that's what Anderson wants. Oh. Lunch. Very good. See ya. Hamburger without? Thank you. Dad, is your hamburger here? Uh, coffee with cream. Thank you. Coffee black. Mm -hmm. Rob, did you get those uh, stress prints that your dad wants? Yeah, they're right here. The, uh, the lab stuff won't be back till Monday, but I, I think I figured the tolerance is pretty close to them. Hey, you want you to go get a hamburger? Uh, hold it, fellas. I think we can at least take five minutes to eat, huh? Yeah. Oh, good. I thought you were never going to suggest it. You know, my wife says you're some sort of a slave driver. Me? Oh, not you by name, but you as the nebulous they that's making a second Joan of Arc out of her poor old husband. Yeah, I didn't have the heart to tell Katie that you were the supervisor on this project, Dad. She's always liked you. <laughs> I guess it has been kind of hard on the wives. These are the test samplings you want, Mr. Douglas. Oh, thanks, Jess. Did you get something to eat? Well, Mr. Jason's secretary and some of the others are going down to a diner in a few minutes. Good. Mr. Douglas, could you... I know it sounds silly, but could you tell my boyfriend that I'm really going to be working here through the weekend? He has a suspicious streak. Yeah. Okay, Dennis, any time. He's on the line now. Oh, okay. Pierce? Here's Mr. Douglas. He wants to talk to you. His name is Pierce Gilderson, Mr. Douglas. Uh, uh, Mr. Gilderson? Uh, oh, uh, fine, Pierce. Uh, look, uh, I'm sorry Janice has had to put in all this overtime, but the entire section here has been... Uh, oh, I see. Well, we should finish by Monday if we work right on through. Okay, Mr. G uh, Pierce. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh. Hey. Thanks, Mr. Douglas. I, I wouldn't have asked you, but I was right on the verge of losing. <laughs> Is it true we'll be back to normal by Monday? Well, we better be. We're, that's the deadline. Would you like to give my wife a call, Steve? <laughs> Rob? You know what would be nice? Why don't you call Katie and have her call Barbara? Tonight? Just the four of us? Oh, Katie, that's wonderful. Isn't that thoughtful of them? Okay, right. Mm -hmm. You come by at 7.30. Right. Bye. What was that? Steve, Robbie, Katie, and I are having dinner tonight at Mama's Lasagna Palace. Is that all? You make it sound like you're Cinderella going to the royal ball to meet the prince. <laughs> I am, Charlie. I am. <laughs> Man, yeah. Charlie? You'll do. Well, coming from a man who sailed the seven seas, I'll accept that. <laughs> Come in. Hi, everybody. Ooh, that's beautiful. Oh, we may be a little grand for Mama's lasagna palace, but well, who knows, maybe they'll take us dancing afterwards. How do I look? Real neat, Katie. 
Nifty. Real nifty. Thank you. What she do, Charlie? Oh, she'll do. And you two better go if you're going to get there ahead of the guys. And keep the doors on your car locked. I don't like the idea of two good-looking dames driving around alone at night. That is the nicest thing you have ever said to me. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you later. Bye, Mama and Kitty. Have a nice time. Have a good time. Come on, Ernie. Let's go upstairs and think. What's the rush? I want to get ready to iron up Mims and get dressed up and look pretty like Mama and Katie. <laughs> uh, they start young. <laughs> Much later than it was a minute ago. Oh, you have a little wine while you wait. Hmm? I don't think so, Mama. Did Mr. Douglas say how late he'd be when he called? Wonder if anything's happened to them. No, 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 no. I tell your fortune. You see, nothing can go wrong. Um, you can't. Fine. The black spade. That is for turning over new life. <laughs> and here they are now. <laughs> right this way. <laughs> you know, the cards, they just proved that you were safe and sound. <laughs> hi, honey. Honey? Oh, hi there. Uh, hi. Hi, Kitty. Hi. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm, uh, I'm sorry I was so late. It's nice to be able to relax. I think it's just awful the way they're working you. Well, we decided to wait until you got here before we ordered. Oh, good. good. Well, Rob, don't go to sleep before you have dinner. I'm just resting my eyes on you. Well, uh, how are uh, Ernie and, uh, and Chip and Dodie and uh, what's his name? Uh... Dodie and Ernie are fine. Chip has been home for a week. And um, what's his name? Is it a peanut ball tournament? Hmm, peanut ball. That's a good game. Yes, it is. Rob? Uh, the fettuccine and the lasagna, they're both very strong with my customers tonight. Honey, how does that sound? Honey. Mm hmm? How does that sound? Oh, well, uh, uh, how does what sound? The fettuccine. That's Italian, isn't it? I think so. Well, that's that sounds wonderful. How does that sound to you, honey? What? How does that sound to you? How does what sound, honey? Fettuccine. Well, that's a nice thought. <laughs> Fettuccine for everybody? I'm afraid not, Mama. We, uh, we're gonna have to take them home. <laughs> Sweetheart, let's go. Huh? Come on. Where are you going? We're going. Oh, well, we better get a check. Huh? <laughs> it's on the house. Oh, well, that, that's very sweet. <laughs> Come on. Uh, good night. Oh, such fine marriages you both have. You know, most wives in your situation would be very angry. You both look so pretty. Well, they can't see how pretty we look if they're asleep. Come on, honey. Let's go home. What? Uh, I didn't get my fettuccine. You can have it in the car. Oh, that's good. <laughs> And I am pleased to say the R11 project will be finished today instead of on Monday as originally planned. Signed.
Yes, sir. Are we actually almost through, Mr. Douglas? Just about, Janice. But you'd better send out and get some food. We uh, still have a few odds and ends to clean up. Yes, sir. Congratulations, Mr. Douglas. This was really a tough one. You ought to have a party to celebrate. Yeah, with all the fireworks, huh? Thanks for all your help, Janice. You're welcome. And don't forget the food. June, your boss and my boss are just about through. <laughs> Me too. Only I just had an idea. Why don't we give them a sort of victory party right here at the office? Good. Well, they deserve it after what they've been through. What did Robbie say when you called? Well, they were in sight of the finish, but would probably eat at the plant. You know what that means, don't you? They send out for hamburgers and they... Hey. What? Are you free later on this evening? I've never been freer. The babies are with my aunt in Glendale. Well, then why don't we fix the boys some good food and take it over to the plant ourselves? That's a great idea. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm Mrs. Stephen Douglas, and uh, this is Mrs. Robert Douglas. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, we're bringing them some food. Uh, our husband said it. Uh, I don't mean this is bribery, but you know, you look a little hungry. Uh, yeah, potato salad, chicken. I have two ladies here for Mr. Douglas, uh, carrying two containers and. Uh, a large basket of food. What am I supposed to do? He says there's not much security involved anymore, and I'm uh, supposed to check the food and let you in. I've checked the food. You can go. Oh. <laughs> become furious. I could get hysterical. About what? But I'm not going to do any of those things, Steve. I merely want to point out that this is the potato salad and the fried chicken. <laughs> hey, Dad, did you bring the glass? Hey, hi. Rob, they uh, seem to have some kind of wrong impression. Shall we go, Barbara? It's just root beer. Well, it's the principle of the thing, Rob Douglas. We'll talk about it later, Steve. No, wait a Dad. minute. Dad, let him go. But they shouldn't have thought that we were doing something underhanded. They had no right to just assume we were a couple of rats, right? Oh, yeah. Well, what better way to make them realize it than to let them boil for a while? And then we'll tell them that this was a victory party given to us by our fellow workers for a job well done. I'm sorry, Robert. I don't go along with that. Well, just try it my way, Dad. For one thing, I've been married longer than you have. <laughs> but I've lived longer than you have. And you just don't let a woman you love boil for a while, if you put it. Do something to straighten it out. Now, come on, get your coat. I just don't believe it. We sit at home night after night, and they're at the office having a party. But, Katie, they can't be having a party every night. Why are you sticking up for them? You saw it with your own eyes. Well, I know, but I just think maybe we should have given them a chance to explain. Root beer. Huh. It was root beer, wasn't it? Well, sure. That's the way it starts. First root beer, and then beer without the root, and then champagne. Katie, we made a mistake. Oh, I'm sorry, Barbara. I don't think so. I saw what I saw. No? I know Steve, and you know Robbie, and they wouldn't do anything out of line. There were giggling girls in Dad's office, and I saw them. And nothing Rob tells me will change what I saw. Nothing. I don't care what his excuse is. All right. Before anybody says one word, you better hear this. We finished early, and Dad's secretary organized a victory party at the last minute. That's what you saw? Period. End of explanation. That's right. 
Period. End of explanation. Now, Rob, we, uh, we sort of figured that out on the way home. No, you did. I'm sorry, Tommy. Hey, what's going on here? A dance marathon? <laughs> no, Charlie, I, I feel like I've been in one, though. Hey, guess who won the pinochle contest? <laughs> Good for you, Charlie. Hiya. Oh, hi, Ern. I'll be happy to know that Rob and I finally finished the project. Why don't we organize a victory dinner? Hello? Who? Yes, he's here. Hey, Steve, it's for you, your secretary. Oh, Charlie, tell her I'll... Uh... Okay. Dodie and I decided to quit beaming thoughts to other people. Oh, well, fine, fine. Hello, Janice. Uh, say, I'm sorry, uh, Rob and I had to run off, but... Uh, hey, are you crying? Well, how do you get in there in the first place? <laughs> you, hey, all right, put him on, I'll talk to him. <laughs> Pierce, this is Stephen Douglas. <laughs> you know something? You sound just like a jealous woman. <laughs> now, listen to me. The girls were just giving us a little victory party because we finished the project. If you'll go around and check the glasses, you'll find out we were all drinking root beer. That's right, root beer. You know that song about a, a good man being hard to find? Well, I think we found two of them. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'll get it. Okay. What do you think? I think they're cute. <laughs> well, with Chip away, we have plenty of room. You're never going to get him home. <laughs> You're right. We'll stay the night. Honey. Hey. All right, come on. Up, up. Come on. Hey, we're going to stay here. Oh. 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 Oh.